Welcome back everyone. Hopefully you got to see my last video on uh, how to avoid emotionally unavailable people. And if you didn't, I hope you'll check it out. Along those same lines, I want to talk about the crazy things that narcissists say. And uh, hopefully we'll have a little bit of fun with this. I could tell you, you know, when you're in the thick of it, it's not fun at all. But, you know, um, hopefully we'll get a good laugh out of it here on this video. Um, but before I get into the video, let's first clarify what is narcissism and what is gaslighting. Okay, so that we're all on the same page. Narcissism, very simply and succinctly put, it should probably be called empathy deficient disorder because that's what it is. Um, narcissism is kind of a strange word, um, is it not? It's got a history that I don't want to bore you with, but you know, long story short, it boils down to people who are deficient in demonstrating empathy towards others. Now, I talk a whole lot more about that in my uh, teaching series uh, on you know healing from narcissistic abuse. It's on Vimeo, and if you want to know more about it, I'm going to talk about that at the end of this video. It's also soon to be released on Kindle, then Amazon print, then Audible. So um, I'll put the links down below if you're interested in that. But uh, gaslighting is something narcissists do. And, you know, again, I talk more about that in the book. But basically, uh, to summarize what gaslighting is, is um, it's a term having to do with controlling and manipulative behavior. It's a way that narcissists um, and people with personality disorders deflect and distract and blame in order to hide some kind of truth or benefit themselves in some way at the cost of another person. So they use methods, which we're gonna about to get into, they use methods of calling into question the other person's sanity like oh, who me no i would never do that why would you think that of me i mean i would never you know uh, this kind of nonsense all right um they make the other person um question what's really going on what's real what's reality um, and they make that other person doubt their actions and decisions and that's where the manipulation comes in so getting into the crazy things that I have heard narcissists say or heard of narcissists saying to others, number one, I don't care about your feelings. Or I've even heard, you care too much about what other people think. I mean, maybe I do, but maybe you care too little. I don't know, it's just a thought, just a thought. All right, another thing I've heard is, I was just kidding. You're too serious. You can't even take a joke. And this is after they cut you down or they tell a rude joke at your expense and they basically want to one up you or somebody else and you try to put them in check and they're like, oh, get over it. You're just too serious. Another thing I've heard is this type of bragging behavior, usually it comes from the covert I'm sorry, the overt narcissist, <laughs> not to get those confused. Um, I explain that in the book as well. But basically, um, you know, this kind of bragging, um, going about talking about I, I used to own this and I used to live in that neighborhood and I used to manage this many employees at that company. Um, the overt narcs really like to brag and showboat, and those are the ones who are typically going to exaggerate and embellish their accomplishments. They do like the flashy cars and homes that they can't even afford. They, um, they really want things that make them appear as though they're greater than they really are, uh, larger than life, you know? And... Um, they might be things that have actually cost them or their relationships greatly on an emotional level. Um, even with the covert narcissists, the narcissists are not so open about it. It's more of a kind of subtle type thing going on. Um, they might have a lot of nice things too. They don't openly brag about it as directly as the overt, but... Um, They'll look like, well, they've got their lives together in some respect, but you don't. And again, 
if you look deeper, you find out, you know, they've really put their families through a lot of, of uh, pain to get what they've gotten materially. Another thing I've heard is everyone agrees with me. Well, everybody agrees with me. Where is everybody? Nobody's around, you know, to, to validate this. And um, they're just going to say it in a conversation between the two of you. And this is a psychological maneuver known as triangulation, where they bring this third party into the conversation who isn't even around to verify or deny whether the narcissist's claim is legitimate. So you're left to think that nobody else agrees with you, so you must be wrong, right? Yeah. All right, so another, another thing that I've heard narcissists say is, um, I know people who think you're too negative, right? This is getting you to change because there's something too fill in the blank about you, right? <laughs> um, this is again, another attempt at triangulation where the narcissist, um, when you confront them about something, they bring this third party in um, to give like social proof that they're right and you're wrong. Um, and even if you went to this person, and you said, Hey, um, did you tell so-and-so that I'm too negative or too whatever, fill in the blank. Um, and these people deny it and say, no, I never said that. Or that's not what I meant. My words were twisted. This is what I really said. Um, then, you know, you find out that this person was really fabricating the storyline, this triangulation in order to create distraction and deflection from the truth. Another thing I've heard is, and I've heard other people have been, you know, dealt with gaslighters have been told things like, you're never happy. No wonder so-and-so doesn't like you. And you didn't even know that person. You thought you were getting along great with that person. And they bring, oh, yeah, so-and-so doesn't even really like you. Um, what do you mean I have no friends? None of your friends actually like you. Yeah. And so then they start making it out like you have imagined yourself to have these relationships, but people are being two-faced with you, right? It's getting you to doubt yourself, right? It's a way of also turning the tables so that you can get the focus off of them and start looking at yourself, your own conscious, and, and their lack of self-conscious, their lack of conscience, I should say. Um, they can have very dramatic outbursts of anger, by the way, um, when they don't get their way or they perceive that they're not going to get their way, very dramatic. And then when you confront them, they can say things like, Oh, I guess I'm not allowed to get angry. And you might have said something so mild and respectful, like, could you please um, manage your anger in a considerate, healthy way towards everyone? And yeah, their response is, oh, I guess I'm not allowed to get angry then. Now, when they get really totally caught, I mean, caught red handed, busted without a doubt. I mean, a lot of times they will still deny, okay, that's not what happened, you know, this type of thing. But sometimes they will apologize and say, oh, I really get it this time. I really understand your part, but they're having this like um, fake epiphany that they understand your pain, that they feel your pain, you know. Um, yeah, some, sometimes they'll deny, they'll deny it to the bitter end, but other times they can be the most magnificent actors and having these false epiphanies and false recoveries. And so if you want to see a really good example of this, go watch the video Liar by Henry Rollins. Watch the original one. Now, it's, it's hardcore. It's like headbanging type music, okay? So, but if you, can, if you can bear with that for a moment, even though that might not be your genre of choice, if you can bear with it for a moment, then I think you're going to be glad you did because he really personifies this getting caught red-handed and the fake epiphany and the fake recovery and then the relapse. So 
Um, and usually, by the way, narcs relapse within six months. It's very hard to keep up the facade for more than six months. So usually that's when the mask comes off and you see the real person behind that mask. So, um, but between now and then, they could just be apologizing profusely and saying that they're feeling your pain, they're not going to do it again, that they're serious, you know, but it's really just manipulation to get you to lower your defenses back down so they can get back to doing things the way they were doing it before they got caught so they can manipulate you right all over again, okay? Um, another thing I've heard a uh, narc say is, um, well, you couldn't tell I was about to blow up. You couldn't tell that you were upsetting me. You know, like it's your responsibility to just see and know, like you're a mind reader, um, that this person's about to fly off in a fit of rage. Um, and they're going to blame you for not only not being a mind reader, but they're going to make you responsible for managing their emotions for them because they really believe that it's other people's responsibilities to manage their emotions for them, not themselves. Another thing I've heard is, I know what you're thinking, I can tell. Um, narcissists really like to convince you that they know things more than, like they're smarter. They know you better than you know yourself, or that you're not as smart, or that you misunderstood. Um, if, if, you, if you catch them in an outright lie or twisting of facts, you, they will even say things like, well, I never said that. I never did that. You misunderstood. Let me tell you what's really going on. And then that's when <laughs> they start painting this whole new storyline that purposefully misleads you all over again. Um, and sometimes what they're saying is true and factual, but it's presented in such a way to purposely, purposefully mislead or confuse you. Like they're not giving all the information or they're saying things in an insinuating way to lead you to drawing false conclusions. And it's all on purpose. But if you really put them back to there, they're like, well, I mean, I never did say that exactly. You just drew that conclusion. Well, you led me to draw that conclusion. So um, careful, you know. Another thing I've heard is, well, you just want to rehash the past. And I'm not going to discuss this with you anymore. Well, why are you rehashing the past? Maybe it's because it never got solved in the first place. And that's why it gets, it keeps getting brought up over and over again, because there's never any resolution. The narcissist, they have no intention of changing. What they want is to wear you down and get you to a place where you consent, you concede to making changes in response to their unchanged behavior. They want you to make the changes, right? They want you to accommodate their unchanged behavior. Another thing I've heard is all I do is pay bills around here. You just want me for my money. <laughs> okay, this again is about getting the focus off of them and onto you, right? So that you start defending your character by saying things like, no, 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 I really do love you. You misunderstood me. It's not like that. Let me show you. And then you start proving to them that you love them and you really care rather than the other way around, rather than them proving to you that, you know, they are good for something more than paying bills. <laughs> if that, right? So another thing I've heard a narcissist say is, um, stop telling people stuff about me. I mean, yeah, to some degree, there needs to be confidentiality and privacy, right? In relationships, we get this. I think most of us do. But I mean, what stuff do you not want me talking to other people about? Be careful because, I mean, if it's just like, oh, well, he got a new job and he just started it yesterday. Well, they don't want you telling people that they started a new job or why. It's to control the flow of information. They don't want you comparing notes with other people. 
you know, oh, well, he's going over there to pick up. He went to the store to go pick that up. Oh, really? Well, he told me he was going over to so-and-so's house. See, they don't want you getting together with people comparing notes about what's really going on. And finally, you know, I got to wrap this up by saying I know a lot of the examples were about men because <laughs> I'm a woman, all right? But I'm not saying that it's just men that do this, all right? We know there are women who do this. I have met um, women, particularly over the last year, several of them that are just... Oh, uh, in fact, I had to tell my kids to stay away from one of them because I said, this girl's a lizard, okay? She, and they laughed at me. They thought that was funny. And they're like, why don't you just call her a snake? And I'm like, well, I'm not going to call her a snake because she doesn't seem to have fangs. She seems to be very harmless and cute looking. But at the end of the day, she's cold-blooded, right? She doesn't have, she's not attuning and harmonizing on an emotional level with people. And there's manipulation going on, whether... It's kind of overt with the, the, the comments that I just shared with you, or it's covert, just withholding all the information. Uh, whatever the reason, I have seen this go on with men and women. It is a, you know, a problem of people, right? Um, and so if you want to know more about this, because I, I really excerpted this information out of my book, but if you want to know more about this, like, uh, why do narcissists gaslight and is there any cure for it? I talk about it in um, part one of my series on Vimeo, uh, Healing from Narcissistic Abuse. It's $3.99 uh, per video, very affordable, very accessible. And if you just want to know about that, you know, um, subject alone, you know, about the gaslighting and narcissism, you might want to check out that that first part. And it's also chapter one in my book, which is being soon released to Kindle, then Amazon print, and then later on Audible. And as soon as I have the links for um, all of them, they'll be put down below. But for now, I'm going to put the link for um, Vimeo. If you want to check it out, I hope you'll join me over there. And until next time, I'm wishing you guys all the best. Yeah, stay narc free. <laughs> There's no better way to live, right? Okay, y'all hang in there. Be blessed.